fair but the skies in Flushing Meadow for the opening of the New York World's Fair. The steel unisphere, 12 stories high and light as lace, is the focal point of the great international exposition. The first of the 70 million people who will come to the fair in the next two summers brave the downpour and the puddles. The news of the day cameraman gets his first views of the grounds, as many will do, from one of the Alpine cable cars that ride above the exhibits of foreign nations that cluster around the court of peace. Even the rooftops of the pavilions and palaces are interesting to look down upon. The Grand Parade starts from the Fountain of the Continents. With costumes considerably more dampened than their spirits, the marchers swing along for the honor of their state or their country. American beauties ride the stagecoach of the Old West, just as in the movies. Some of the most exuberant of the paraders are, as might be expected, from the state of Montana. Now come the representatives from foreign lands that are exhibiting at the fair. Their participation underscores the international understanding that is the ultimate purpose of the exposition, though its official reason for being is to mark the 300th anniversary of the founding of New York. The many-footed dragon is as indispensable to a Chinese parade as a brass band is to an American one. The Singer Bowl is the stadium for large official ceremonies such as the opening of the fair. First speaker is Robert Moses, president of the Fair Corporation. We invite visitors from every state and land, solicit their friendship, and devoutly hope that in presenting here this Olympics of progress, we shall draw them closer together in our shrinking globe, and thus, in the end, promote peace. The guest of honor is President Johnson, who flew up from Washington to deliver his address. Mr. Johnson's predecessor, President John F. Kennedy, had been one of the earliest enthusiasts of the fair. Mr. Johnson compares the world of this fair with that of 1939 and with one of the future in a world of peace. This fair represents the most promising of our hopes. It gathers together from 80 countries the achievements of industry the health of nations, the creations of man. This fair shows us what man at his most creative and constructive is capable of doing. And so I take my leave of what Ogden Nash has called the promised land of Mr. Moses. Hoping and trusting that in the future it will not take anyone 40 years to reach it. Thank you very much. After the ceremonies, the president mingles with his listeners before he returns to Washington, where later in the afternoon he announces settlement of the five-year-old railroad dispute. And later in the afternoon, the rain stopped. Although the sky remains lowering over Flushing Meadow and the exotic buildings that fill its 646 acres. Their architecture, ranging from gilded temples to severe modern modules or utter fantasy, give a diversity that is the charm of any great exposition, but never so richly as here. Hollywood is represented by a replica of Grauman's Chinese Theater. The industrial area is a showcase for the makers of American products that are known in homes around the world. Fairgoers are bound to get hungry, and they can find almost any kind of food they want, from a snack to a gourmet dinner at the many restaurants and lunch counters. One can walk from one end of the fair to the other in 23 minutes, but who wants to? With nightfall and the turning on of its myriads of lights, the fair comes into its truly magical best. Everything glows or glitters. It is time to forget its serious or educational purposes and give oneself over to its sheer enchantment.
the true magnificence of any great garden or park is always in the play of living water springing into the air from fountains or lying in quiet pools. And this fair abounds in fountains and pools. Fireworks add their drama to the jets of water and the mists about them. Gone now are the memories of rain and puddles, the scattered demonstrations, the weariness of long hours walking about. Now all, all is fair. <laughs> 